Okay, so remember that they're uh, changing my voice. So, speaking on this topic, this leads me to another topic that's awkward. A lot of government workers, they advise me against it, right? I don't work for the government. You know, they're targeting me, you know, to some degree. it's At times, they seem more diplomatic than other times, but the overall thing is consistent targeting every day, fuming and poisoning me and so on and so forth. And for whatever reason, they haven't protested super tough about me bringing up that they're communicating to me in various ways so and it's probably because my videos are suppressed and that goes back to you know you take away someone's freedom of speech and play stupid about it you violate someone's freedom of religion play stupid about it. take their gun rights for petty reasons play stupid about it right when there's community ha harassment and they act like it doesn't exist right these are key components that went into my decision to uh, uh, make this video about what I'm gonna make it about because this is also part of my story part of my story is seeing a world where there's you know so-called terrorists and they're doing things that are a lot more understandable than they're making it seem just like gang members doing things that are more understandable they're not smart they're not wise per se some of the things they're doing at least but they're more understandable than they're making it seem in fact they used to call uh, gang members at one time where they were toying with the idea they were saying that they're urban terrorists okay you see how much they they, they use that term for political reasons and it comes with a, a, a heavy cost from the society at large so every time they say, you know, they say if they say Martin Luther King was a terrorist, right? It 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 takes a toll because that community then responds like he's an enemy of the state, okay? And to some degree, in the minds of lots of people back then, there was more people against them than support them, mind you. And society doesn't want to highlight that. Um, in their minds, okay, they treat it that way, okay? So America is. A modern day plantation and I am going to say that because it's the right thing to do where the citizens are weaponized and mass shooters are right to think not necessarily to act that's a more difficult philosophical question but they're right to think in terms of engaging their ruthless and fanatically conditioned oppressors including and especially perhaps the weaponized citizens now bear with me bear with me I know this is controversial as hell and I, I, I am not one to shrink from controversy. No, 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 no. Remember Kennedy, one of his speeches, he said the lawmaker, I think it was Solon, he decreed it a crime for any citizen to shrink from controversy. It comes with uh, a serious consequences when we shrink from controversy over serious issues. Okay. So why are they right to think that? Well, first, let's, I'm going to use two examples. One, an actual plantation long ago. And two, the, um, a concentration camp. If you were in a concentration camp and you were a Jewish gentleman or lady and the other members of the concentration camp were terrified by the Nazis into harassing you and being weaponized against you and you knew if you, it was time to escape, for example, that they're going to tell on you, they're going to resist you trying to get in good with their slave masters because they quote unquote got to live, right? Would you see them as an enemy combatant? And if you had to snuff them out to escape, would you do so? Yes, you would do so, right? So there are circumstances where in which that, you know, it's logical to see people who aren't part of the military or police or Gestapo or whatever, right, as, as enemy combatants. Actually, I'm going to make three scenarios. We'll get to the third one in a second. The second scenario is the plantation. If you're on a plantation and the other slaves were informants and so on and so forth and you're planning an uprising, okay, you know, and... Those slaves were informants kind of swing toward backing up the black overseer and so on and so forth and the people in the house who think of it in terms of, hey, you know, if these guys try to do this and try to escape, where does that leave us? And they're going to resist you. Do you see them as combatants? Yes. So it's not as simple as saying, hey, you know, they're, they're just another slave or they're just another inmate in a camp. Okay. The third scenario I'm going to give you is a scenario... Um, with military uh, combatants, right? Say you're, you're, the lines are drawn up, you're shooting at each other, there's artillery hitting, you know, maybe a, a little bit more old uh, warfare, right? Back when they used more artillery, less drones, and so they basically didn't have drones, okay? And there's a bunch of citizens there. Some of them are armed, and some are just there, you know, just giving them medical aid. Some are just happen to be there as they don't know where else to go or something, right? And that's where the food is. And, and they're shooting at you. Do you then shoot back at them, and you don't shed any tears if you take out the civilians next to them? You see what I'm saying? So if you weaponize the civilian population, okay, and they haven't distinguished themselves 
as non-combatants by admitting gang stalking is is real as uncontrolled opposition okay then they are fair game now i'm not saying that people should go out and shoot them i'm not saying that in this video that's not what this video is about i'm not saying they should or shouldn't this video is not have, about having an opinion on that this video is about how irresponsible it is for America to play stupid about its part. Just like when they say, you know, don't blame the victim when she's raped. If she goes around getting drunk in the hood and hanging out with rapists and one day gets raped, then you should tell her, hey, what the hell were you thinking? Just like America right now. America is like that drunk slut hanging out with scoundrels, okay? And then something bad happens and they don't want to take any responsibility for it. If you oppress people to the point that they're right to lash out, or excuse me, they're right to, to consider lashing out, to look at the situation and say, where should they strike? When some of them actually strike, you have a part in that too. You have a part in that. When you censor free speech beyond what is heard in the news, okay, and you pretend that's not happening, you're provoking them to violence. You're cracking the slave whip and saying, what are you going to do about it? Okay, either you're a man or you're a slave. What, what's it going to be? That's what you're saying to them. And they're right to think about fighting back because you gave them no other recourse. Assimilating to your oppressor's plantation system and giving up your rights is not the sane recourse of a sane person. That's an inhuman recourse. And going into the earth instead of up to heaven, so to speak. In principle, if you're not religious, it's an inhuman recourse. The human recourse is to resist your oppressor. Our lives begin to end when we become quiet about things that matter. Something to this effect is what Martin Luther King said, right? The true measure of a man is not where he stands in times of comforts and convenience, comfort and convenience, but in times of controversy. Are you a man or are you a slave? Is what they're saying by their actions. My next point is that community harassment, community stalking is real. And even right now, they want me to pretend that it's not. And I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to pretend. I'm going to do what's right. I'm going to do God's will. It's real. And when you do it, you're giving them a reason to lash out. And when you do it and pretend that it's not real, when you pretend that couldn't possibly be going on, even when a, a law enforcement agent in Santa, uh, Santa Cruz, you know, had what may very well have been the courage to stand up and say, yes, it's real. And they using technology and all that. They've elevated themselves is the word he used to using technology. He was referring mostly to the internet, but it makes it clear in that kind of blanket statement, that kind of general statement, that they very well could use other technologies as well. And they very well may be at the time, is what the argument was being made, if you read between the lines. So that also makes it logical and sane for them to think in terms of striking striking the weaponized citizenry because if someone goes into you know if you go in if you go to the range once in a while and you go into a police station okay you're not going to make it out right you know you're probably you might not even kill a single one of them so what the fuck's the point of doing that you're going to you're going to attack the most fortified military base in america maybe attack the bill at pentagon you know the white house right fucking retarded so they're they're pu they're pushing them toward those quote-unquote soft targets you see what i'm saying Therefore, we can ascertain, we can fucking deduce that there is a silent war being waged on the American people with military-grade tactics and technology. Is that right? No. Is that fair? No. As you see, Biden taking a weak stance on Gaza because the military-industrial complex has so much power. Is that right? No. Because there's wealthy people who refuse to have a fair economic system so people don't have enough economic justice for the system to be a working political system. I was just listening to the news a little while ago and they admitted that everyone thinks the system's corrupt. Bribes. Corruption. Sexual misconduct. That's commonplace. Because without economic justice, is there social justice? I tell you. I tell you the truth. If you put me in charge of the war and poverty plan, I will live a modest life. I'm willing to be on camera all the time, except for when I'm in the shower and things like that. So you know that at any given moment, I'm living a modest life. This stuff's more important than your individual pleasure 
and your, your false pride, your flesh-braced pride. Universal moral principles are more important. And if they come for me and say I'm mentally ill and take me to the psych ward because I pointed this out, okay, I'm willing to, I'm willing to, I'm willing to, to, to endure that. I'm a man of principle. This is the truth. People are getting killed because people won't admit their part in the process. Like the president said, he said, why does this keep happening in America? Because America is a particular type of modern day plantation where there's a silent war with military grade psychology and its variations and in, in the spectrum that we see, okay, that are included in that silent war against the American people, against people who otherwise might very well be in the divine order and worshiping God without the government interfering, and they have no right to interfere. They have no right to abuse our children. They have no right. 